but that's why you need to take care of your bodies, feed yourself, hydrate. That was actually something that like was a very hard like concept for me to grasp. That like, like taking care of your body? No, 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 no. no. Oh. That like your <laughs> gut Honestly, health. That too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that your gut health actually like, like affects your gut instincts. So like. No way. That's what no. That's the thing that I. That's just like. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good. Hey you guys, welcome back to another episode of No Right Answers. Today I got two lovely guests. I'm with Yuna and Eunice. Um some people I met through um how do we how do we meet? Through like kinda like, like a party. Mutual yeah, yeah, yeah. friends, yeah. Your sisters, like clothing brands. Oh yeah, yeah. Um did you shot with one of the Groovy Grill? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. It was the at Atlantic Station, I uh -huh, think. Yeah. Yeah, that was a while ago, but yeah, um, ago. yeah, they um they kind of asked to like be on the podcast, and I would love to have them on because I feel like they're very creative in a kind of different way. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna let them introduce themselves so you guys kind of know a little bit about them. Well, my name is Yuna, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still a student at UGA for landscape architecture, and 23 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm Eunice. I'm 24 years old. I graduated from UGA and now I'm getting my MBA at Georgia State. Oh, you switched? Okay. Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Why? Um, well, I, it was like during COVID and like I like mm. honestly didn't feel like I was having like a purpose in life. I was so miserable. So I just kind of decided to go back to school. But UGA has this thing where like you have to be have work experience for two years before you go into grad school but Georgia State didn't have that requirement so that's just why I so worked. after you finish your undergrad you have to go work for two years and then come back to school yeah they okay, want work experience like that you got heated for that <laughs> yeah, cause that's like you're, what are you like you're 22, 22 maybe 24 23, 24 when you're going back to school yeah like I wouldn't be able to go back to school until I basically now yeah that's yeah, so. that's crazy um and that's like yeah that's one thing or one reason why like, I feel like the school system is just like a business like yeah no for sure it is but um I kind of wanted to ask like how did you guys kind of met met up with each other or how did you guys like became friends so <laughs> it all started in college at UGA and mm, <laughs> um, what happened um, oh, no I met Cynthia, which is her like really close friend, their best mm. friend. Uh, you guys grew up together, you and Cynthia? Yeah, yeah. basically okay. in like elementary school. But oh, wow. she's a year older than us, uh -huh. so we had that oh. great difference. Okay. Yeah, that's why I met Cynthia first. And then there was also this one night out, and mm. I remember we were like kind of hanging out, and I remember telling Cynthia that night, oh, I have a friend crush on Eunice. Uh, <laughs> and Cynthia's like, oh my gosh, I think you guys would be perfect for each other. So That's It's funny. actually really funny because I remember like we um, when she like started getting super close to Cynthia, like mm. the three of us were like hanging out. We even lived together at one point. But like there was something that like we still couldn't get that close for some reason. And yeah, then, still now. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> and then there was like this one summer where like we just hung out a lot because I think Cynthia was like dating her first boyfriend or something like that. Uh, and then we were like, wait, are we like actually friends now? <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But it's actually kind of funny because I mean, I think we're all similar, the three of us, but like I think getting to know her more, like we have very much similar ways, especially like emotionally. Yeah. Mm. So what we get mean? each other. <laughs> what do you mean by emotionally? Well, we're just emotional people. Okay. Also, yeah. we're both Gemini moons. I don't know if you know horoscopes very well. Gemini moons. I'm a. Uh, I don't know that. <laughs> What's your sign? I think I'm a Sun Pisces, Ooh. and Ooh. my moon is Capricorn. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. interesting. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I feel like I know him though. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh <laughs> that okay. makes a lot of sense. Did you guys? So you. Do you guys? Do you guys like take that pretty seriously? Like, like. Mm. Is that like one of the first questions you ask when you meet someone? Like, what's your... Well, I, <laughs> you I know there's like, the no, it's because I know there's a stigma behind it. And I know people are shit on like, mm. oh my gosh, these girls and their moon and stars. Okay. But I think it's valid. Because so. the moon and stars are something that's so much bigger than us. And mm. again, energy, <laughs> you know? And so there's no way we're not affected by it, by it if like... 
the waves are so affected by the moon, you know? Mm. We're still affected by the sun throughout our day for our time. And and astrology is something that goes back like like, you know, like back day in the one, day. Exactly. Yeah. So like That's there true. has to be some merit to it, I think. But like I don't know if I would necessarily say I take it like super seriously. It's more like entertaining for me. Mm. But it is still something like one of my first questions I'll ask somebody. <laughs> So you guys have the same same moon sign uh-huh. mm-hmm. and yeah. same sun sign? No, 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 no. no? Yeah. Okay. Um, we're one off. Aries Taurus. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so I asked you guys for some topics that y'all wanted to talk about. Um, one of them was uh, about ego. Mm-hmm. I kind of... That's like something that I'm kind of fighting right now mm-hmm. with myself. Like I would say I would have a high ego, and I'm trying to like, um, like stay hu- stay mm-hmm. humble. Yeah, stay humble and kind of keep myself grounded. And because I feel like if you're like egotistical, like you have like no real room for like growth and like whether that be for yourself or like even with relationships, you know? Because like yeah. when you are just so focused on yourself, like you aren't able to like have like that loving relationship with like your friends, family, even strangers Mm -hmm. um, when you meet them for the first time. So I wanted to kind of ask why that was like a topic that you kind of wanted to talk about in the first place. Well, I think you kind of summarized it basically, Mm. but it started like that concept. I think it's different for me because I was trying to build ego for myself because I came from like, I'm caring about literally everyone else but me, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm such a people pleaser, so I cared a lot about what other people thought about me, and I didn't want anyone to say shit about me, and that's still ego, but I don't think it's as noticeable. But, um, yeah, and then I, throughout college, I was trying to find myself, like, who am I, what do I offer to the world, what's my purpose in life, and... I went through all sorts of extremes, it felt like. And I went through a period where I really found self-confidence. Like, I felt good. I looked good. Mm. I was like, I knew what I had to offer the world. But when I look back on it now, it was such an egotistical thing because it was really hard to take into the fact that, like, I may not have the perfect perception that I see myself as in this moment. And other people probably don't have the best... Like, they, they won't ever have the full picture of me, so, if they're, of course, they're going to say shit t- at times, you know? Because mm-hmm. they don't understand you. Yeah, and that's, like, fine. Picture, yeah. yeah, and so when I wasn't able to accept that, I got really hurt, and then that made me care even more about what I look like on the outside and how I portrayed other, myself to other people. And then, where was I going after that? You said something about growth um yeah so like i feel like having an ego kind of prevents growth yeah um i don't know if you agree with that or i do agree with that and more than ego my like driving thing in life is i want to always always grow and i want to always Mm -hmm. have that like childlike heart that is open to growing and i can't be that child if i am stuck in that adult ego you know okay can you can you kind of define like what having an ego is like Mm. like a high ego to be exact so i think the difference between ego and confidence is again when you can't accept your whole picture like your your flaws what people like say about you Mm -hmm. and opening yourself up to the fact that your perception is not the only perspective on life Mm. you know because again it's your perception it's how your five senses are taking everything in and i don't think you should also ever get to a point where you're putting yourself so down and only hearing what other people think because you have to have a certain level of confidence also to be that gauge when other people are saying stuff like oh like this is something that i think is true mm. or this is something that like, like i respect your perspective but that that's not mine mm-hmm. type of thing mm-hmm. that mm. and also like maybe understanding you know what i'm if i'm being honest yeah like this is something that i can work on but not being yourself up about it you know mm. so you have to have a certain level of confidence to say like it's okay 
you're gonna get through it, you're gonna be better. And so I think ego, and in the book that I was telling you about, ego is the <laughs> enemy. And the first two chapters that I've read, there's a way to keep yourself in check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, what is keeping yourself in check? Always have someone above you and always oh. have someone below you. So that you're always learning and you're always teaching. Mm. So that you can practice whatever how, you're learning. How can you gauge that? Like, I think we all have our own below gauge. Below I think we all have our uh -huh. own gauge. And it depends on whatever goal you're trying okay, to Okay, but achieve. isn't gauging that egotistical in itself? Like... Okay, now you're... <laughs> you're making a question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm only on chapter three. <laughs> I mean, I think, yeah, you're not wrong. Like, saying, oh, I'm better than you in this, mm -hmm. like, that might come off as egotistical, but I feel like, like, for example, like, I might be better than you at speaking, but mm -hmm. you might be better than, at me than, like, understanding emotions. So mm -hmm. we can both kind of learn from each other, mm -hmm. even though we're both, like, better in, in different fields. No, I, mm -hmm. I get that. I also just think there's always something to learn from everyone. I agree, You yeah. know, it can be good or bad. Like, probably... The easiest example is you probably grow up with looking at your parents and thinking like, this is not how I want to mm -hmm. grow up to be. Mm -hmm. Most kids think that, I think. Mm -hmm. But there's always something to learn. Like I have shitty ass professors at my school and I'm learning how not to do what they're doing. Like how not to act, how not to teach. Yeah, like, how to be more professional. Like okay. I'm getting all the bad examples so I know oh, what I'm not, not to do. I'm not gonna do that, okay. Exactly, yeah. Mm. So I think there's always something to learn. And just because you put people in the category of above or below doesn't mean that you can't switch it. It's just a matter of perspective again, mm. you know? You can be a student from your own student. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's I, all about perspective. I think that's just like kind of having an open mind, like even though like you see yourself as like smarter, better than that person, I think still being like, having that open mind of like um, being open to learn even from your students because I feel like not everyone but once that label is kind of placed oh I'm better than you at this you're like there's nothing I could get from you mm -hmm. like people draw that line but having that continuous like um, thirst for knowledge and thirst uh, for learning I think you can learn literally anything from anybody and like you said you can learn what to do what not to do mm -hmm. I, I really like that mindset it's something that I would say I have adopted yeah and you can tell when people have that openness in mm. them you know you That's can true. see when people are very egotistical and you get mm. that vibe and again you can tell it the stars like the energy <laughs> the energy <laughs> is just off I feel it no that's like I thought it was like all bullshit but I think now I kind of not agree with like the whole like and yeah, I'm not the horoscopes, but like the energy I could definitely mm -hmm. like, I could feel like, cause it's off the bat, you already mm -hmm. know, and like, it's not something that you could really conceal, like you can, you can talk to me like all nice, but like, you could tell by not, maybe, maybe not by their aura, but like, maybe like their body language and mm -hmm. like, you could like, do they have like ulterior motive, like mm -hmm. you can kind of feel that. I think that is kind of aura though. Like okay, you can, I, yeah, I guess. you can like yeah, just true. really get a sense of someone. Like some people, I, I just see straight black just radiating off of yeah. them. It's just, just like negative hate. energy. Yeah. Like it, they don't even have to be mean, you know? But it's just, I feel some negative energy. Okay, what do you, um, for those type of people, how do you kind of approach that? Are you like, oh, like I don't want your energy to like mix with mine or is it like, mm -hmm. No, it's a challenge. Like I want, like let me. <laughs> I want to fix them. You know, yeah. I want to be like, hey, like my. I think I have a lot of like happiness and joy, so mm. I want to show that like goofiness to them, so maybe they'll like turn gray. Mm. Okay. I was like yeah, a different color. I feel like I used to have that mindset too, where like I just want to like keep trying to see like if I can like change that person a little bit and stuff like that but I think sometimes you reach a certain point where like you can't yeah. and like it's better for yourself if you just kind of put that energy away from you yeah I mean, it's like just healthier yeah for yourself I, yeah, yeah I think that's like I kind of want to say like act of self-love like yeah. you know like respecting your own boundaries exactly instead of being like um like a people pleaser mm -hmm. where you always try to like help other people mm -hmm. like having that confidence to be like 
like I tried, but mm -hmm. like you're just not receiving. Like yeah. I gotta like draw that line here. And for those people, I feel like it's kind of like their journey that they have to kind of figure out for themselves. No matter mm -hmm. sure. how much you, you want to support them, it's mm -hmm. something that unless they make that mm -hmm. conscious decision, they're, they're gonna be. But like I that. still think though, that's like ego. Cause if you're doing something to get a response, then why do it in the first place? You know, like I. It has no effect on me by me just like sharing my aura in mm -hmm. the room, you know? Mm -hmm. It doesn't take anything away from me. It's not like I'm like taking some of the black and being like, hold on, <laughs> let me like smudge it on my thing, you know? Mm -hmm. It's very like, I have what I have to give just by being myself there and then you can take it or leave it. I honestly don't care at the end of the day. I'm gonna move on. Well, now that you <laughs> mentioned that, like you are like that. I'm like. <laughs> I think it also just depends on like the capacity of capacities of each individual because mm -hmm. I feel like for me I kind of am the type that like when I try to mix our auras I I, I get that back yeah. where you can just keep giving and not like feel depleted. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I'll run away before it gets too much. <laughs> so you you feel like when um you're trying to help someone like you feel like you're kind of taking on that burden uh -huh, for yourself. For sure. And it like kind of puts me in a darker place like but I think you also give more than I give. Like when she gives, it's like 100% she's gonna give. When I give, it's like, the 100% is spread out, you know? <laughs> I think, it's like, a long-term commitment. Like, are you trying to say like, your give is just you being yourself? Like, you know, like you're just like, um, good energy, but she's more like directed, like she's actively like trying to like, be more like positive? Or am I interpreting it incorrectly? I think so. I think because when you're just like normal, mm -hmm. you're, you're just like a very chill person, but I can tell when she's like trying to give, she's be exerting more mm. energy. Like you can see the effort. Yeah, okay. and so I think that's... Yeah, it comes a lot more naturally for her, and then I need to like actually try to like mm. put it out there. I also can't take life seriously, so... Really? Yeah. I have the opposite problem. I feel like I take it too serious sometimes. I'm like, Justin, you just need to like relax. relax. You, can you relate to yes, that? Or? Yes, I take life too seriously. Yeah. I have a lot of anxiety. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that kind of went away for me with age because that's also another thing oh, really? that we bonded with was mm -hmm. our anxiety. Yeah. Mm. Just being so, or I was just terrified of people. Like, like I, talking to people? Yeah. Like, really? Like I, you were introverted? Both of y'all? Um, I like to think we're extroverted introverts. Yeah. Like, introverted, like, as our foundation, but we definitely have very extroverted Like, high energy. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, but what, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, being not introverted, but... Oh, oh, we bonded through our anxiety. Mm. Oh, we bonded through our anxiety, but I feel like that anxiety kind of went away from me recently like with recently, like recently? yeah recently like probably this semester so oh, wow. beginning of 2023 and i don't know if it was me like being more confident me letting go of the ego or honestly just not thinking at all anymore <laughs> but it um You like lost this anxiety recently. Oh, and I think that's more because I see the patterns that happen in your lifetime. Like, in your lifetime or everyone's? Just in life, in everyone's life, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I think 20s is a very normal time for you to be anxious because it's kind of when you're experiencing life independently mm -hmm. and making your own decisions, trying to gauge is this right or wrong, mm -hmm. you know? And once you kind of understand after enough events happen in your life, and you're like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm gonna be fine, Okay. you know? So I think that trust starts to build more and more in yourself that, you know, I'm fine. I can take care of myself. I'm breathing today. So I clearly made it past like 20 something years, you know? Mm -hmm. And how can I make this better? And now you can start to stack up on like, oh, I can add more and more things to be a better person, you know? 
I need to get like that. I'm like still, because I'm a year older than her still too, but mm. like I'm like still always in like freak out mode. Like I know that conceptually, that like, you know, everything's going to be fine. Everything's mm. going to work out. Like life is going to go the way it's supposed to and stuff. But like you can't, I can't ever like get rid of like the thought and that like freak out, the, the fear that mm. like I'm going to make a wrong decision or like I'm going to ruin my life by doing this or like, you know. But I think when... I've grown the most is when I've made the most mistakes. So yes. and when I know yes. that I learn the most by making mistakes, it's just like, okay, this is a part of learning. I guess I'm excited to make mistakes. You know? <laughs> they love that in interviews. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I, I honestly agree with that. I think looking for, like, not obviously purposely making mistakes, but I think, like, kind of like testing your limits. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. even like this right here, like, I, I would say, Talking has never been a strong suit of mine, and to this day, like I still like stutter a lot. Like when I talk, I like have to pause and think about what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So it was like it was tough starting a podcast where I'm like trying to talk like for an hour, two hours straight. But I think just putting myself in this situation kind of forced me to get better, and I feel like um, it kind of carries over into like other aspects of your life. I don't know if you guys are actively like trying to get like out of your comfort zone but like talking to strangers was like like even like ordering at a restaurant was like I was like you know like it was like it was a lot but now like I try to like just talk to everyone even if it's like a small thing like oh like you have a nice jacket like have a nice day like small things like that I think just like having that repetition that practice really like helped me break out of the shell yeah. but it's, it's still a journey for me I would say but that's the first thing I noticed about you was just how like you are still extroverted, but still very much carry your own, like, this is just me, and mm. I, I'm still open to talk, you know? Like, as in? Like, you're chill, and that's what I get the most from very chill people okay. that are still very outgoing, is mm. like, wow, they can just be themselves mm. so seamlessly in, like, a party situation when it's high energy, you know? And they're just like, oh, and there's still a good time. I would get nervous that if I'm chill, then like everyone's gonna. Oh, I look like, like a party pooper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, those thoughts exactly are would run through my head, but I don't know. I'm like, I don't know how you guys were like going to UGA. Um, did you guys party a lot in school or? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 like, like for me, like obviously I I didn't go to college, mm -hmm. so like that whole scene was very like foreign to me. So every time I would go, I would feel like very out of place. Mm -hmm. And like, like, I'm pretty tall. So it's like, it's not easy for me to kind of like, just like hide in the corner. Like, I feel like everyone's looking at me like, so in those situations, it's like, I feel like that's when my anxiety is like the mm -hmm. highest. And it's, it's just interesting to hear you say like, oh, like I think you keep her cool. Like, yeah, cause that's like, do. maybe that what it looks like on the outside, <laughs> but like on the inside, I'm like freaking out. Like, I don't want to look like a loser, like, you know? Yeah. So it was just like funny hearing that perspective. Yeah. No, I still think about that stuff, like, oh, especially with my nostrils. Oh and my God. <laughs> no, I really get, that's how I know I'm anxious, is if I can feel my nostrils too much. They're like flaring. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, am I flaring not on purpose? I can't tell. So I that's keep so touching funny. my nose. <laughs> yeah. That's like, that's another level of like uh, self awareness, though, like knowing your own like body cues of like when you're nervous yeah i'm like i try to do that more because cynthia so the other trio member mm -hmm. cynthia's kind of my like guru in um oh. being very sure of yourself yes mm -hmm. yeah that's who we both go to i think to gate or like, get stable. a good example of and yeah, she's someone that's very aware of how her body works and how her mind, body, and emotions all Like she's all very self-aware. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and it happens so naturally for her. And so I just listen to her experiences a lot, and I'm like thinking, okay, what would Cynthia do in this situation? Let me try and feel mm. my like heart rate. Let me try and like think about myself right now. That's, okay, that's very interesting. I think the difference between us and her is that like, she carries no like self doubt, you know. <laughs> like it's like confidence in the way that like she is so sure about every decision that make, she makes. Like if it feels right to her, then it's right, yeah. you know. Okay. And oh like, my god, I wish Cynthia was here. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk to her about that so uh -huh. badly. 
Um, so I, I cut you off, or um, I'll let me. Yeah, I'll let you finish. Oh yeah, what was I saying? She's very sure of herself, uh, like. No self doubt. Oh, like, <clears throat> like when I kind of like pick her brain about like how she can do that. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's something that I can't really even comprehend because, um, oh, like, wow. let's say, because I'm a very anxious person. So like, if I'm anxious about something, then obviously I want to shut that off. Mm -hmm. So I'm like asking her, how do you just like shut it off? And literally mm -hmm. for her, when she's explaining to me, she's like, I tell myself that it's nothing to worry about, and oh, her brain good. just believes that. You know, mm -hmm. whereas like I think we carry a lot more self doubt. Like we tell ourselves that, but then we don't believe it. Yeah. You know, and it just goes in that spiral. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. So one thing I heard about like having these anxious thoughts, mm -hmm. um, it was from I believe she's like a CEO. She's like very successful, but what she said was like, people see me and think like I'm this confident person, but no, like I s grew up with anxiety. I still have these problems to this day, but. It's not that I kind of outgrew it. It's not that I can control it better. It's or it's not that I don't have it, but it's now that when I have these anxious thoughts, I'm able to recognize it as a pattern and be like, I've been here before. Like yeah. even though like I'm having these thoughts and I feel this way, what the, what what uh, matters is my actions. So uh -huh. even though I'm, I'm having this feeling, I'm still gonna do it. I'm mm -hmm. still gonna like build that repetition, that practice, mm -hmm. that mu muscle memory of like being able to still like do the thing even though you have this feeling so maybe that no I definitely like that's what because like I realized that I can't be like Cynthia in the sense that mm. I can just turn it off so like that's what I've been doing like I just feel it like, I let it happen and I just do it anyway you like, know I got I mean? this yeah. Like, okay. yeah exactly and another thing that she talks about a lot is just like her gut like feeling it in her gut because we have gut instincts yeah. you know and I saw another thing on Instagram about how CEOs, the thing that they care for the most after their like head is their gut. Because gut instincts matter so much. And when you make a decision that's right or like right for you, you just feel it in your gut. And you're mm. like, oh, like, okay, that feels right. And then if it doesn't, then you're like, okay, I, I learned a new mistake. Mm. But that's why you need to take care of your bodies feed yourself, hydrate. That was actually something that like was a very hard like concept for me to grasp. That like, taking care of your body? No, 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 no. no. Oh. That like your <laughs> gut Honestly, health. That too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that your gut health actually like, like affects your gut instincts. So like No way. That's what no, that's a thing that I That's just like like science people yeah, research that. Like, if your also with your head cuz if your head's too clouded to even notice what's happening mm. then you won't get it like, like what i've been hearing is like they call it gut instincts for a reason you mm. know what i mean and if you don't take care of that then like you can't really like be in tune exactly. with it exactly engage mm. but yeah that was hard for me to grasp too i was like how does that Got correlate <laughs> i think that's like one of the amazing things about the body it's like mm. everything is like it is connected like crazy uh -huh. connected like I don't know if you guys are into like um like pressure points and all that. What are pressure points? I thought you were gonna say psychedelic. <laughs> <laughs> Why psychedelic? <laughs> um, but it's just like I don't know. I, I I don't know too much about it, but I know like some people like the foot, like if you massage the area, it will like fix mm -hmm. like your like mm -hmm. organs or something. And I don't know if that's like true or if it's like. I don't know exactly, but I know for a fact that like all of the nerves in your body are like connected. Are connected. You know. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember I hurt my, I hurt my back when I was like in high school, and my mom took me to this acupun Chinese acupuncturist person, and um, he was like, okay, you are, you have a hurt back, like lay down. I'm like, okay. He puts needles in my hands, in my face. And in my feet, oh. but he doesn't touch my back at all. So the whole time I'm laying there, I'm like, what is the point of this? Like, what are you doing? You know, and I'm just like, okay. And then he takes it out and I like stand up and I'm like, it's oh. all better. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel better? That's and it crazy. makes sense. You know, everything is connected. Mm. Everything yeah. is connected. I love that saying. Everything's connected. Yeah. Have you seen um every every of course, oh my, my favorite top tier, top tier. Okay. It's such a yeah. good movie. Yeah. Um, okay, so one thing that uh you said about Cynthia that I kind of want to talk about, and obviously like um she's not here. Obviously, it would be better to talk to her about it. Mm -hmm. But 
do you think that like her like her like high trust and her gut instinct do you think that comes from kind of like an arrogance kind of like not in a bad way but like being very sure like oh i'm the shit like i'm gonna get this done like i know i'm making the right moves or like oh know, absolutely I she is the shit though. She is the shit. <laughs> she I, I, okay. like, and we're not saying that just because we're her friends. Like she, she is. is. And like it definitely does come from like a place of just really knowing herself well. Mm. And like I don't want to say arrogance, but just like genuine confidence, confidence. in who she is. Mm. Cause Very she can inspired. also joke about herself. Like uh-huh. she knows like point at her own yeah. like flaws. And uh, when I think that I have nothing to offer her, mm. she like comes up with some bullshit, you know, to be like, no, you're, you're special. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes me feel good because mm. she's also still very humble about it. It's not arrogant at all, but yeah. You got, I, I would never say she's arrogant. Okay. Like that. Yeah, uh, I didn't mean to come off. No, 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 no. <laughs> but um, would, can you guys kind of relate to that? Like having not like a high ego but like feeling like oh like i'm different like i was destined to be great like i don't know if you guys feel like yeah, that I d- <laughs> so we are <laughs> wait <laughs> we had so in college oh. we were definitely going through something in that household because there's the three of us mm-hmm. and we were like finding ourselves I also came from a very sheltered home, so it was me like getting to be a rebel. Drink. Were you like the only child, or no? I have a little brother, mm, okay. but they're still very like Christian, Korean. Yeah, house. yeah a, a little bit. They they're definitely a lot more open minded now, okay. but um, yeah. And so we would go. <laughs> we were really feeling our energies, you know, mm. feeding off of each other. And we would always go around saying, we're it. We're it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like to like, move to each like, other? No, no like, 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 at bars. like, let's say, like, we're getting ready to, like, go out. Oh, we're, like, looking at each other, we're like, oh, my God, we're it. Like, <laughs> and the thing is, is, like, our friends around us, like, our boyfriends and stuff like that at the time, they would, like, hear that, and they'd be like, what is wrong with you guys? But, like, our response to that would be, like, if you don't think you're you yourself is it, then like no one ever, no one else is ever gonna believe that. Yeah. So I don't care what you have to say. We're gonna keep saying it. We're fucking it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you okay? So you guys did have that, or was it something that you kind of like once you guys got together, like you guys kind of like built off of each other? Oh, and like your confidence kind of grew mm-hmm. in that sense. I would definitely say that when we are together, like the three of us, like unstoppable, unstoppable force. Mm-hmm. But I think, like individually, I don't want to speak for you, but like each of us have our like own levels of like confidence and stuff like that. But like I think when we're together, we just bring out the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the worst. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the worst. And the worst. Yeah. You know how when like there's like a s- specific partnership between people that creates like murders. No. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mind, but when I don't know about Cynthia, she's always doing the right thing. But when it's us two together, oh, you guys are the troublemakers. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like we make very bad decisions when we're together. Mm. We're very much enablers of each other. You know, oh, okay. like I see what you're she'll say about. some dumb shit, and I'll be like, I'm down. Oh, let's do it. You know? <laughs> But I feel like that's like not that maybe the child in you, but like the free spirit, like mm-hmm. you gotta have a good time. Yeah. Is but Cynthia like the responsible one? Like she's like the mom of the group, or um, in some aspects. Uh-huh. But I feel like she's also. I don't know. She has moments. Okay. She has moments. I would definitely say she is like the most responsible in the sense of like. Knowing when a decision, like what, knowing when a decision is bad, and like we shouldn't do that. Mm. But yeah, like, like she keep you on check. Not really though. Like <laughs> we'll, we'll make those like bad decisions together, and she's like, guys, and then that's <laughs> it. <laughs> and she'll be there watching us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. I, I kind of want to move on to like mm-hmm. kind of what y'all do. Uh, let's start with Yuna. Uh, let's talk about some of the architecture, kind of how it kind of came to be for you? Like, is this something that you always knew you wanted to do? Mm-hmm. Or like, what was the inspiration like coming from? 
So I have to correct you. I'm not in architecture school. I'm mm -hmm. in landscape architecture school. Mm -hmm. And that's like the outside stuff. But I did not know, honestly. I only chose landscape architecture because I wanted to do architecture, but it wasn't mm -hmm. provided at UGA. So I just chose this major. And so going into college, you knew like you wanted to be in that space. Mm -mm. Going into college, I wanted to be a dentist. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, and so I was in chem for two years, and I was like, oh, I don't think I actually like this. I think I just like saying that I'm a STEM major. You know, mm. it feels really good when people are like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I realize I'm not someone that can sit at my desk and just study. I can't do that. And with landscape architecture, it happened by chance. And honestly, I don't see myself doing that for my entire life. Mm -hmm. I don't see my career as being like a one-stop shop. I just want to experience as many things as I possibly can. So I, I want to be able to be like a, maybe I'll get my CPA license and I'll do taxes for a year. And then maybe I'll do like, do I still like math? <laughs> or I'll, I, maybe I'll open up my own business. Maybe I'll become a chef. Maybe I'll do like paintings. So you just want to like try out these new things and like, yeah. oh, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah, because I can get myself to like and enjoy anything, I think. Do you think that, okay, so I could relate to you like a lot in that aspect because I've been like switching jobs like almost like every year. But do you think that kind of comes from maybe like you get bored really fast mm -hmm. or like, what what makes you want to hop to the next thing like so quickly it's bo boredom and then also i don't Curiosity. feeling i don't like feeling like i'm limited to one thing mm, like you know? you're in a box yeah okay so for me the one thing that is my state stability my rock is i want to have a family like that would be that's like a fact you yeah that's like my life purpose for some people mm -hmm. it's their job some people it's like just themselves but for me i really think my one role is to be a mother right. like stay at home mom or like i mean stay at home mom i want to be a working mom i just want to be a mom yeah i love it and then all of these side quests are my jobs you know mm -hmm. and i want to be able to be a mom that can do everything you know mm -hmm. so as in like you want to be like a role model for your kids or like i just want to say that i've done everything because i don't want to be a hypocrite because that's what i like didn't like about my parents was they were so sheltered their life mm -hmm. that i felt like i was sheltered when i know i'm a very free spirit and i don't want to tell my kids just don't do this because they couldn't do it for themselves or like they haven't even tried it so who are they to say anything you mm -hmm. know I want to be able to give like honest advice about things that I have experienced. Mm, okay, I be like in the end, make your own decision. But I've given you the ropes, you know. Okay. Sorry, I feel like we got a little like side it, Yeah, it's connected. <laughs> um. Landscape <laughs> architect. So yeah, that's why it's tough. It's tough because I am just not someone. So do you just see this as like a one chapter of your life? This whole landscaping yeah. architecture thing? Okay. Like I want to move to New York, meet a bunch of creative people through landscape architecture, mm -hmm. and then maybe do like creative directoring or marketing or food, picture advertising. Oh, do you, do you know um, Ella? Yeah, no, she her, what she does is so cool. Yeah. So cool and she's so good at it. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I just want to have fun doing what I'm doing. Okay, so that makes me want to ask, do you not care about like being like very proficient at one thing? Like, cause I feel like being a jack of all trades, you aren't able to be really, like, you might be good at things, but you can't be like really good. You, you don't care about that? Like, mm -mm. I had to come ter to terms with that, I think a long time ago. So I was someone that could do everything, but I wasn't the best oh, at anything, okay. you know? But for me, it's not about being the best. I just really, I'm doing things because I enjoy it, and I, that's it, you know, it's the process. Mm -hmm. And so 
I will have to say though, I think you know, like only like is interested in certain things that like I will be good at that that she will be good at. So I think she's being a little bit humble right now because the things that she does like decide to do, she's definitely above average at them, mm. and that's why she likes it to begin with. I mean that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would choose like yeah. I would choose my strengths over my weakness. Exactly. Yeah. Like I don't do sports for a reason, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I see. Do you have like a next chapter already kind of in mind, or are you like, it's good, like, it's kind of the chance. You just like, oh, I'm gonna go with the flow. Yeah, because every time I plan something, it never goes my way. Mm. But it's always the right way in the end. So, I'm just trusting life. As long as I'm alive and healthy and happy, I'm good. That's all that matters. Yeah. Okay. Um. So Josh told me something, and I kind of wanted to ask you about it. Mm -hmm. So he, <laughs> we, were talking, <laughs> we were talking about these homes, like in Buckhead, and like you know, like these this area, and we we're talking about like these homes that are like very like boxy, like symmetrical, like it's just like one mm -hmm. color. And he was like, "Yeah, I think it's like so cool, but like Yuna thinks it's like it's corny or something." <laughs> so I wanted to ask, like, what's like your perspective on that, like? Well, it's, okay, so you're talking about like the all white or with like the black furniture. Like the parasite aesthetic, yeah. you know, like, yeah. like the stone, like big windows. It just is not my style. I think it looks really cool, but I don't think it's my style. I think it's so like pretentious, so. What does that word mean? So like f for rich people only kind of vibe uh, like oh i'm above it's you it's like for taking sure. something a lot more seriously than it should be i think so a lot of people think that art like certain types of art are very pretentious like like let's say you know you go into a museum and you see like this a canvas and there's just like a black dot and people are like looking at it like wow this yeah. is amazing like to us like that's pretentious because like you know it's just it's a black fucking it. yeah, yeah. Like, i could do that yeah especially because of those homes <clears throat> like i I'm on the side where I do think they're cool though, and like I would live in one. <laughs> but like I, I have to agree. Like those are like they're like very empty. There's like nothing. Yeah, it's, it's not home. Yeah, it's exactly. not unique. Mm. They're not yeah. thinking. Like think outside the box. It's been done. All those colors have been done. At least switch up something. You know, put a triangle in there, like a oh. circle or a okay. squiggle. You know, it's too easy. Okay, so it's like it's it's just basic to you. Yeah. Do you, have you ever thought about like I'm gonna build my own home? Like I'm a. I do. So I kind of want to start this summer when I have time to learn woodworking. No way. So like, that I can build my own furniture and stuff. Oh, you're gonna build it, build it. Yeah. Oh shit. Like Habitat for Humanity, I'm gonna build it. What is Habitat for Humanity? It's the, <laughs> it's the you. It's a nonprofit mm -hmm. where they help build homes for the homeless. I'm pretty wow. sure. Or underserved communities. So. You're gonna work with them and like learn how to. No, I'll just make it for oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll make it for myself. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanna get my. I just like making things with my hands. Mm, your hands-on learner. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Do you have like a next chapter for you? Um, like work-wise or just life. your life, your career, your just. I mean, I don't, I don't, I want to say I have anything planned. Um, I do have like a vision of where my life is going right now. Mm -hmm. um, but similar to y'all, like it's just about like, you know, trying to be the best version of myself and trying to grow every day. So I don't know where that's going to take me. I do have like an identity of like who I want to be, like very disciplined, very like a strong leader, like all these like characteristics. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say I have like, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, yeah. and I'm going to do that. Like, I'm just like not going with the flow, but just like taking it one step at a time. Yeah. Are you a planner? What do you mean? Like, like are you like someone that likes to oh have yeah. a plan? Like, I get like I get pretty like obsessed with like mm -hmm. my Google Calendar is, is always like filled up. Like I gotta make sure like I'm hitting everything, because if not, I'm like I get stressed. I'm yeah. like I'm not I'm not using my time wisely. Mm -hmm. I'm like I'm wasting time, so I make sure like I work out in the morning like all the time and like all that stuff. Dang. Yeah, I saw the. Oh, here before uh, oh, gym open. <laughs> I'm, I'm such a stalker <laughs> on your page. Oh my god. Like 5 a.m. Yeah, 
I, I remember it because it was 555. Uh, 555. Yeah. It was like perfect timing. Yeah. Too, so I had to post it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to start going to the gym at like 5, 6 because my Here. job starts at like 7, 8. Uh, oh, so you have a job? Um, Kind of. It's like, um, so I work as a locksmith. Right now, that's where um, I'm making money. Basically, all I do is like help people get into their homes, mm-hmm. um, their cars, either like install locks. I like mm-hmm. it's like kind of like handiwork, mm-hmm. but it's like on call, so we don't have an office. Like everything I do off the phone. I talk to the customers off the phone as well. So I like the freedom to like be kind of anywhere, but it's like my whole day is to that. Like it's yeah. like twelve-hour shifts. Like Dang, so. Twelve-hour shifts. Yeah, but like. We, it's not like we're working all oh. hours. Like sometimes, like I, I'll have like a two-hour break, and mm-hmm. I'll just like be at Starbucks, like studying my my thing, or, like mm-hmm. editing a video, do my own, own type of thing. Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But it's still kind of like is annoying to have something always in the back of your yeah. head. Like yeah, like I can't plan anything, you know. Yeah. But it's like pretty good money. So yeah, that's good. I, I'm just like trying to like make the most of it. Like I. I kind of got humbled by my uh, boss. He, um, he was like, bro, you're not taking this serious. And I wasn't like, I was like purposely like passing jobs and uh. like, and I was like complaining like, oh, I'm not getting enough. But he was like, bro, like you need to take yourself serious, not this job. Like mm-hmm. you're yeah. half-assing like your life right mm-hmm. now. You're waking up late. And he was just like, like grilling me. And like, and he like, does, he's not my friend. Like, you know, he doesn't really know me, mm-hmm. but just like hearing that kind of like woke me up and I was like, man, like you're, you're right. Like I have been like half-assing life, mm-hmm. like, and ever since, and this is like a week ago. So like ever since hearing that, I'm like, man, like I'm gonna get my shit together. Like mm-hmm. I'm trying to like, you know, stop smoking. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to like work out in, in the morning. Cause like I was making excuses like, oh, like I gotta wake up at like seven to go. No, let's wake up earlier so mm-hmm. you can go to the gym mm-hmm. and then you can still work. So instead of like finding excuses, I'm trying to find solutions to what I want to do. I think that's a good mindset because I feel like a lot of people will like hear that like that complaint from like their boss and then they be like you know fuck this like exactly yeah I mean that was literally me I was like but you don't know what I'm going through like you don't know me like and then like I don't know it's just like I was like it was like the truth you know everything he was saying was right Uh it kind of like like I was like Justin like get over that like you're being egotistical you know (laughs) so yeah that's us that's something I've been going through recently It's your turn. Let's okay. talk about what you're going to school for. Um, I'm going to GSU. I'm getting my MBA and I'm specializing in marketing. Mm-hmm. Also on a digital marketing pathway, but for you. What do you what, what do you say? So like marketing is very a broad field of just like, you know, marketing and advertising for a business and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I want to go more on the digital route because that's obviously where our like future is yeah. going. And also um, I'm just more I more enjoy like the social media aspect or like the content creation rather than like. So okay, so when you say um, online, are you talking about like making TikToks, making um, Instagram pages for these businesses? Yeah, so that's what I do with my current part-time job right now. Oh, you're oh, are you already working in this? So um, right out of college, I started um, working for a startup called Four Social Sync. Mm-hmm. Um, And like basically we work with small businesses or small like brands and we like build profiles for them, um, post for them, create content for them, depending on just like what they need. Like it could be like Instagram, TikTok or like Pinterest or like whatever. Um, And then that's like something that I really enjoy doing, but I also kind of want to go into like um, a little bit like more broader than social media too. Like um, Like running ads on Facebook. Exactly. Like things just all things digital marketing. Mm. Are, do you, okay, so for you, do you um, see yourself like having your own ad agency, like, or are you trying to work for somebody and like, okay, learn the game and then start your own thing? Like, what's what's your plan right now? So actually, um, I kind of wanted to only do like social media for a long time because that was the one that I felt like the most connected to, the one that I felt like I knew the most and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But as I started working and like, Cause I started working with social media because I was like, oh, I'm gonna do something that I love. So mm-hmm. that's why I went there. But I don't know, kind of reality just hit where like 
all work eventually just starts becoming work and not that enjoyable. Yeah. And like, so like, I noticed that like, I'm like creating content for these like pages and stuff like that. And it's making me not want to do my own like, cause I do like art illustrations and stuff like that. And like, because I'm making art for these people, I don't feel like doing it for myself anymore. Okay. Uh -huh. So I recently kind of decided that um, work is always going to be work but we need work to make money. So I'm just gonna, right now at least, I might change my mind later on, but I wanna go into medical marketing right now. What is that? It's just marketing for like medical like companies. Doctors? Like far, far, um, so what, I have an internship coming up and my position basically is uh, creating like more awareness for like epilepsy. So it's, it's gonna be really interesting. It's really new to me. I don't even know what to expect really, but I know that it will, be at least a little bit more money than like social media marketing right now and if I can just create stability in something that is just work to me because I everybody actually it's very rare I think for like you to ask somebody if they love their job and they're like yeah like I love my job yeah. and so like I'm so okay with that I think and I'm just gonna work create stability and then in my free time just do like what I want to do that's not for other people <laughs> Yeah. Like keep your passion and work separate. Very separate, yeah. Okay. I can see. I can mm -hmm. see how it can be like kind of draining, mm -hmm. kind of combining both. Um, one thing I wanted to ask about this new internship uh -huh. that you have coming up, are you like, do you know anything about it yet, or is it like, is it very new to you? It's very new to me. I actually okay. don't really know. And honestly, like, um, I think like, it's something that. They like, I'm not really sure they know what I'm doing yet either because like during the interview process and stuff, they were just asking me like, they wanted to know more if like I was a good human being <laughs> rather than like my marketing skills and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually really interested in where this is gonna go. But, but mm, that's, that's interesting that yeah. you say that. I feel like, like that just made me um, kind of click something in my head. It was like, when you want to work with somebody, mm -hmm. whether it's business or whatever, like, I think, and this is something my uh, one of my previous guests said was like, I never worry about like what you can provide or like, well obviously that matters, but like the first thing I I notice or look for is like, can we vibe? Like, yeah. do you have good energy? Are you like a positive mm -hmm. person? And that's what I love too, because honestly, like that was the best interview I ever had. Like yeah. I like- Like you killed I, it? Yeah, like I, oh. I, I came out there, I was like, I killed it. But like I was stressed before it because mm -hmm. I was like, Oh my god, they're gonna ask me about like what How do my, run yeah, like what my greatest strength is in marketing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I'm like thinking of things that I should be able to say, and then I get there and she's like, "What are you the most proud of in your life?" And I'm like, "I got I this." Love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. But were you gonna ask me something about Instagram? Um. So I was, I was gonna show you guys something, but I forgot what I was gonna. <laughs> but with. Uh, with that job, are you gonna like, you know if it's gonna be like a video ad or is like, how you like, do you know anything about it or? I have no idea, but like okay. what I assume though is I'm gonna be making like maybe like infographics for like, uh, just like facts about epilepsy, maybe running like social media, maybe, I'm not really sure, but yeah. I just feel like what's happening also is there's like a shift in work culture about like, is this a good work environment? Cause at this point, I think most people, if you're applying for a job, you know you've got to have a certain level of skill sets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, with AI also, like things oh, are getting, shit. you know, more automated. And so what they're, what we're trying to look for is more of that human to human connection, because mm -hmm. we're also able to tell when something's AI. Yeah. You know. Wait, so what was that last part? You, the. Like, as. A customer or just in daily daily human to human contact mm -hmm. we're looking for that human connection and I think we're at a place where we are craving it that's why there's a shift from this toxic work culture where we were just being productionists to now where like we're trying to create a work environment so that we're treated as humans just respectfully and have a good work environment and I think that will also bleed into this whole AI generation where you're gonna get the best at this point you're gonna we have the best technology standardized and so what is it 
it's services or a skill sets, you know that that's kind of like a foundation. It's, it's a baseline. And on top of that, you gotta be a good person. Mm -hmm. You gotta have the vibes mm -hmm. in order to surpass the AI, because that's something that the AI doesn't have, the human capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Creativity. Yeah. I agree. I think, like, yeah, like, I feel like a new era is about to start with this whole AI thing, because sure. it is about to take a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and the only people that are gonna make it through this storm are people that accept that fact that, oh, like, I'm a lawyer and this AI can, like, create a whole case in, like, seconds. Mm -hmm. um, how can I make it a tool of mine so that I can become a better lawyer? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I feel like people that are able to like, adapt quickly are gonna, like, leave everyone mm -hmm. in the dust, especially with, like, this is what I want to show you. Um, this. AI, I don't know if you're like I saw this. You saw this? Wait, this is cool. I was cool. like, what the heck? Like, this, this is so cool. Yeah. I don't know if this is something you could use or like. Honestly, I am so excited for when I can just type in like key phrases of what I want it to look like. And it just mm -hmm. pops up. And it pops up because this is the part that takes forever. The whole like 3D modeling mm -hmm. and rendering. Like you got to draw by hand. Or you gotta do the computer and like draw every line and like. Yeah, it depends on your workflow. Your okay. For me, I like doing hand first. Yeah, but that was just. I yeah. saw this and I was like, I have to yeah, show you. Yeah, But it's cool that you already saw it. No, I saved this. I was really? like, <laughs> I use it for my school projects. <laughs> but yeah, uh, AI is like a big topic of conversation like in my grad program right now because oh. it's like, it's something that's gonna be so useful for literally like every industry. Yeah. And um, marketing is definitely one that is like, I guess in danger because like um, a big, thing about marketing is like targeting the correct people and stuff like that. And AI can just go through data and just know exactly who to send that information yeah. to and stuff like that. But like I think a big another big thing though is like um, we had one of my professors brought this like guest speaker and his whole his expertise is on AI and he's basically telling wow. us like not to worry because at least right now AI is not at a place where it can function like a human. Like there are so much, there's so much that we can offer that they would never be able to reproduce. Mm -hmm. You know, that creativity, like you were talking about, that like unique perspective, actually human thought and human yeah. feeling. Yeah. yeah. And they were scared about like phones and work existing. Yeah. Phone. It's just like the next thing in life, you know. Next tool. And I don't know if I'm really just grazing over it, or maybe it like is. Like downplaying it. Yeah, downplaying mm -hmm. it. But I, like, COVID was pandemic was like i mean it was a big deal but we're it's normal we're, we're now fine. you know yeah. and i mean i can't say that for a lot of people but we're fine <laughs> yeah. the three of us are good <laughs> and you know ai is it's just another thing in life and it just goes around and around hmm. um so one of my uh mentors friends one thing he says is um the present is says um the future is always predicted by the movies or the the movies kind of show what's going to happen i don't know if you guys are like believers of like like conspiracy or like mm -hmm. someone in the government trying to like control everything i don't know if y'all believe that i kind of do like even with this whole covid thing i think not that like it was all planned but i think there's a lot going on behind the scenes that the day-to-day -day person aren't aware of like mm -hmm. who's like because I feel like everything that happens, like someone's making money off of it, you know? Someone's benefiting. Um, and I say that to say, um, with this like new technology, I feel like, I feel like there's gonna be like a dystopian future. I don't know if you all seen, um, uh, do you guys watch anime by any chance? No? Never mind. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I feel like there's gonna be like a, really big like wealth gap it's gonna be like really poor people mm -hmm. that are like barely getting by and it's gonna be like the ultra wealthy who are like like living like gods in, mm -hmm. in, in this world i don't know if y'all like kind of see that or i mean like parasite was a movie about that mm -hmm. i thought it was about like, oh about okay yeah i see what you mean that gap is mm -hmm. scary i think that's more something that people should talk about instead of like ai what's gonna happen to my job like the wealth gap yeah or? The wealth gap, just like, that's already the situation right now. And I feel like there's so many more homeless people on the streets mm -hmm. in Atlanta now. Going to LA, 
that was sad. Yeah. So, what do you um? Uh, this might be like a little like controversial, but some people I know um, when they see homeless people like they don't really feel bad. They're like, you guys put yourself in a position. Your life is fucked up because I don't know you. You all the choices that you've made and. What I kind of said was like, yeah, but like some people just have like really bad luck. You know, some people just have like, like shitty stories that they went through. And, but like now that I'm thinking, it's like, I still a agree with the, my, uh, my statement, but I don't know when I see like people in that situation and they're trying to just like beg for money, I'm like, is there like, isn't there something else that y'all could do? Because I, I don't know their perspective, you know? Maybe talking to them might open, open up my eyes, but what do you, what do you guys kind of see? Like, do you, do you guys see as like kind of their problem or do you think it's like a societal problem that we should kind of like be supporting them? Yeah, interesting. That's such a tough question. Yeah, it's a little, I mean, we can brush over it if you want. Cause I yeah, it's okay. I like, I think that like, it's never something that I've like thought that hard into, honestly, mm -hmm. if I'm being completely honest, and maybe that's just me coming from like a very sheltered place of life. But um, I've always been the type to like be empathetic, I guess. Um, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to say like, oh, it's a society problem. Like they can't do anything by themselves. Mm -hmm. But like, I will say like, honestly, like there's nothing special about me but I was born into like a luckier life, I would say, like where I didn't have to go through like that many struggles, you know, mm -hmm. or like, so like who's to say that that person just got that really shit end of the stick and mm -hmm. like life just like shit on them all the time, you know, and that's why they turned out like that. Um, so I don't wanna say like they're not doing enough, mm -hmm. you know, cause I do think there is like people with really bad luck. But um, yeah, it's a hard question. I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, like, is it, is it, do you think like, it's something that we can like, kind of like eliminate? Or is it, do you think it's always gonna be something that? See, I think it's dangerous to, or a little tricky to talk about that as very privileged people against those people. Because that's like when you see like like missionaries go to third world countries and something about it just seems so wrong, really? you know, because they're probably having a perfectly fine life because it's not like they've been exposed to this type of way of living where like material and status and like money is everything. Mm. And so when we're going in there and introducing like, hey, like, look at this, this is what you're missing out on basically, or like, I would, I, I was in an orchestra where we would volunteer and just like play music downtown, and we would have conversations with um, homeless people there, and they're so happy, and just music enough in that perf performance was like, they were so grateful, you know, not all these people are looking for money, honestly, half the time, even if I try, they're like, no, like, get away from me, like, they're just living their life and so it might be different and for some people it's like they were unfortunate enough to have landed in a place like that I do think it's society and like what we think is important which is like a house you gotta have money you gotta have like we're trying to project our values onto yeah, them yeah basically when they don't even mm -hmm. what they probably need is a conversation be like hey like what's going on in your head let's like take it that step so that you can actually put into action, you know? Or are you fine? <laughs> I've also been seeing a lot of like um, stories about people who like choose to be homeless. Like mm -hmm. they like like being able to like like they're not tied down. Exactly, to exactly. Very free spirited people. No, no, yeah. But Did you guys ever do that like the travel van, like or that's not y'all? <laughs> Wait, no, I would. You would? Yeah, I would. <laughs> I need a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like, like <clears throat> I'd love to like live in an RV. Like if I like a completely, completely remote job, nice live in an RV, just like go city to city, just like do your work at like coffee shops, yeah. just keep traveling. 
That'd be cool. Yeah. I'd do it for like a year. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. I want to do it forever, yeah. but like that's definitely something I want to do. Mm. Yeah. That okay. What you said like really, really opened up my eyes about um, how you like talk to them. They're like, yeah, I'm chilling. Like mm -hmm. I love life. Mm -hmm. Like that. Uh, that's very. Uh, that's very cool. Yeah. It's, it's just weird perspective because yeah. you just wouldn't. It's wouldn't just giving it. respect, the same level of respect you would give any other human for their life. Uh -huh. and whatever they've done, and then same respect for me, you know? That is kind of true, though, because, like, you said, like, pushing our own values on yeah. them. It's like, oh, like, this is not the life that we want to live, so we're, like, feeling bad for yeah, these Yeah, I feel people. bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And people, there's homeless people that try to make money off of that. They bring their kids out, and, like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, like, I can't yeah. feed my kids. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's true, but I've seen some people get caught on the I mean, news. It's like kind of marketing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's connected. Yeah. I mean, but I will say there are always going to be like those like evil people who like yeah. try to like yeah yeah take advantage of that. Conversation. I think the world needs more conversations. I agree. agree. Some genuine ass conversations. Yeah. Yeah. This is um. This is something I kind of learned with um, this guy I met. He um, he was saying like relationships. The the, the second you guys stop talking about your true feelings and true thoughts, that's when the relationship kind of ends. Because now you guys are holding back mm. and you guys are being selfish. And both you guys are in a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. um, I actually wanted to talk to y'all about a little bit about that. What are some like um, what are some things that you kind of like learn through like having a partner in your life and trying to grow yourself, but also like grow with this person. That's a very new thing for me. Yes, also very really? new. Yeah. I thought, you, okay. Well, for this, re I've only experienced that kind of level of respect in a relationship and that unconditional love in this one. Mm -hmm. I would say I was very selfish and toxic in the previous ones. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know how to grow by myself and together. But the biggest thing that I've learned is I need more time. You're fine. <laughs> okay. I, I thought that was your answer. I was like, wait. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Because um, in all my other previous relationships, they have always like matched my energy. Because I'm an Aries, <laughs> so uh, we're, I'm like very. Ag I can be very aggressive. Like I can be very angry, um, and I don't hide it. Like I will, you know, use my words. And when when you say uh, they match, it, they will like kind of clash back. Exactly. Like they don't hold back either. Like so, if anything, like being in those kinds of relationships, I basically thought like, this is normal. Like we're supposed mm -hmm. to be like yelling at each other like this, you know? Um, and in my current relationship now, he is the complete opposite of that. Mm -hmm. Like very calm, like doesn't get, yesterday was his first time getting angry with me. <laughs> and it was just like slight annoyance. <laughs> but like, and like at first it was so weird for me to like, deal with I was like why are you not getting mad like it's making me uncomfortable too because as someone who has always kind of grown up like with a lot of anger um, like even in my family and stuff like that so like being angry is like kind of seen as like a negative thing like if I'm being for real and like when someone gives it back to you you view it as less negative because like, you're also yeah. receiving it you know, but when you're being angry to someone and they are not reactive to it, they're just taking that shit, that makes you feel like shit, yeah. you know? So that's something that I've learned with him. And it's like, this is not a normal reaction for me to be doing, not something that I should be expecting out of him either. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that I've learned to be really grateful for him for. Is he like, um, so I'm, 
he, like you said, he's a very calm guy. Is he very like logical? Like, hey, yeah. let's just talk it out. Like, what what's bothering you? Like, um, that's another thing though. It's like he's not the best. He's just a quiet guy, you know. So like, <laughs> there's not no the logic <laughs> behind it. <laughs> <laughs> he's not like, no, he's definitely more logical than emotional for sure. But he's not someone who like really sees the need to like talk it out and like that's really? a, but I honestly kind of appreciate it because there is a lot of times like when I am so heated in my emotions that I don't even know why I'm feeling that way and sometimes I need the space to kind of like cool down cool down and then let my mind kind of tell me why I'm feeling that Touch way on. yeah and so because he doesn't like force me to like because I've had those relationships before where they're like tell me what's wrong like right now why are you feeling this way mm. and then it just makes me like mean or like like trying to like um what is it like just say things to like make my emotions make sense but I don't really mean them mm -hmm. do you know what I'm talking about this is actually really eye-opening for me because we just thought about this because uh -huh. I was like why do you have to yell yeah. you know like why can't you just like take five seconds to gather your thoughts and be like oh this is why I was angry uh -huh. but yeah I see yeah <laughs> you need space <laughs> but um and because he doesn't like ask about it or anything he just kind of gives me that space and then like he just like I think he understands that I just need to feel it out and then mm -hmm. like I'll because I calm down on my own too like I'm self-aware like I do like get reactive but like I definitely understand given a little bit of time that like that wasn't like the right thing to do mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I think just like personally with who I am as a person and knowing all my flaws he is the perfect opposite of me for me, if that makes sense. Like, he um, gives me space when I need it. He's not angry when I'm the one that's angry. And like, I think it's a good balance. Yeah. Okay, I, so uh, you have an older brother, right? Mm -hmm. So with me and Sunshine growing up, mm -hmm. like we, every time we got in an argument and like I had like pretty bad angry, mm -hmm. anger issues, um, Every time we would fight, like, it would get super heated, like, you know, we'll say shit that we don't mean. Mm -hmm. um, and the rest of the day, we just, like, don't talk to each other, like, the energy is bad. Mm -hmm. But the next day, like, we act like we forgot, you know? Um, we're back to, like, being all buddy-buddy. And to me, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, we don't, like, we don't have grudges. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, we could just let it slide. But, like, growing up, I'm like, yo, I think, like, we have all this, like, anger and, like, just, like, pent and we just, like, kind of kept it down here and we never really talked it out. Mm -hmm. So now, like, I was, like, I try to, like, be very vocal with, like, issues I have and, like, how I'm truly feeling, my true, like, my true thoughts. I, I don't, I try not to hold anything back. And it's kind of, it was kind of uncomfortable at first, but it allowed us to, like, really see each other's perspectives and be like, oh, that's why you're angry? Like, mm -hmm. that's not even what I was saying. Like, you're mm -hmm. interpreting it incorrectly. And I don't know if that's something you kind of related with your, your brother, because I feel like you guys are pretty close as well. No, yes. Uh, we're getting there. Yeah, we used to be. Um, oh. Yeah, and I think um, we were definitely like that, very angry with each other, like very mean to each other, like mm. explosive. Um, and there were definitely times when like we would be able to kind of talk it out and like we would be able to kind of understand each other. But I think sometimes it reaches a point where like you don't really have the patience to do it anymore. And, like you're so sick of the person like exploding like that and stuff like that so we're just in a, a weird phase of like respectful era huh? respectful yeah, era. respectful <laughs> yeah i see okay um did, did, did i give you enough time oh um <laughs> i don't want to put you on the spot you don't have to force anything i learn to practice gratitude the most with him like something about your partner that you're grateful for or no, just like gratitude in general like just being oh. thankful mm -hmm. and something that I'm really proud about us is we still like if he drives I will always still say like hey thank you for driving mm -hmm. or like if he pulls out my chair not that thank he does you. that all the time no, <laughs> he'll say, I'll say like thank you mm -hmm. or giving me a hug, you know, just practicing gratitude <laughs> over saying I'm sorry, do you know? Mm. What do you mean? So if like I messed up and instead of saying like, hey, like I'm sorry, I think hearing like, hey, thanks for being so patient with me, 
you know? Oh, the famous gosh. switch. I know what you're saying. Yeah, and so that really helps to kind of protect myself in a way where I'm not like constantly saying like, I'm sorry, but also lifting him up. So instead of like putting me down, it's just the opposite of putting him up. And we both at the beginning of this relationship said that we really want to focus on growth. We never want to be stuck. We never want to be like the old Ajumas and Ajashis that are so stuck in their ways and saying like, I can't change, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we push each other a lot and it kind of sucks at times because you really, he's my accountability partner. I can't like fake around and be like, oh, can you please? He's like, no, this is something we both agreed on. I so that. I think that really helps bridge the age gap also and also makes it really feel like we're not only boyfriend and girlfriend, but real like partners that are trying to like pull each other up or like hold hands and we're going together. And my dad said it the best, but growing together in a relationship isn't like converging. It's, you can go this way, as long as it's not this way, you know? As long as both of you guys are going in some sort of growth direction together, it's gonna look like this. Like your lives are so independent, two very different set of experiences. And so as long as you guys are looking at least in the same direction, it'll be fine, you mm -hmm. know? So I think that's, we're surrounded by that a lot and we give that to each other a lot. Surrounded as in like your friends and family or? Yeah, my friends definitely always push me to grow. I don't think they like, say it directly mm -hmm. but but you feel the support mm -hmm. like they're I'm like the youngest in the friend group so they've got the age mm -hmm. they've already had those experiences before me and so I get to be fortunate enough to just kind of like see them take a step first and then I get to follow them but I still have to grow if I want to stay and be with the it group you know <laughs> but my parents are also very big like open-hearted open-minded people <clears throat> so I uh, like what you just said uh, kind of stuck out to me about the whole contract not contract but like the agreement of like we are going to oh. get together but we're going to grow together as well mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that maybe every couple should kind of talk about or I don't know maybe some couples are okay with being like where yeah. they are mm -hmm. but um, yeah. I wanted to like kind of transition that into like the modern day man, guy, do you, do you guys have any like viewpoints on that? Like, do you feel like, um, like gentlemanness is like kind of dying out, like about like this woman equality <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> Many shit. <laughs> um, no, just kidding. But um, yeah, no, for sure. Chival chivalry is kind of dead, I think a mm. little bit, but not to say like it's extinct, like, um, I don't think like, I think especially like, cause we're all Korean here. Mm -hmm. I think um, Korean men in specific, or maybe like Asian men more generally, mm -hmm. are very um, prideful. So like a lot of times they don't like showing that like simpy side or like doing like all these things for their partner. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think necessarily like it's dead because like my boyfriend for example, like he doesn't do any of that, like, all the time, but, like... If you ask, he'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but you don't want to ask. Yeah. <laughs> that, but, okay, like, the whole purpose. yeah, it's just, like, I think, like, a lot of times, especially, like, in our generation right now, where we're very, like, much self-serving, I think, because I think we're all like that. I think men and women are very, like, self-serving right now, caring more about themselves, which I think is a good thing to an extent, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't think it like crosses their mind as much as it like used to where like it was a societal standard for like men to like take care of their girl you know what I mean but okay what do you what do you guys think about that though because like, I feel like now women are like you don't have to take care of me I can mm -hmm. take care of myself but that kind of puts the man in the position of like oh then like if I'm not supposed to if you don't want me to take care of you then like what do you want me to do mm. I think um it's very important for a man to know that the woman can take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. But it's also very important for them to still make them feel taken care of, mm. if that makes sense. That's and I know well it's put. kind of, yeah. No, that's well put. Yeah. yeah. 
I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I think it's maybe this. Maybe we need to just step away from the male female men's role, women's role. Really? And I think if you just respect your partner and treat them respectfully, then it's just like a friendship. Like it's just a really good friendship and just use sense. Like if you don't feel compelled to do anything special for your partner at all, then why are you with them? Like I don't think I think at that point you're just wasting your own time because there's gonna be someone out there for you where you want to do those things even if in your mind you're like oh man this is so stupid you know it's like you just it comes over you and you would as much as you receive also it just makes you want to give back more and so it's not a matter of like what men deserve what women deserve it's just about like human to human respect Mm -hmm. you know if you're Again, putting out good vibes, you're probably gonna get that good vibes and communication. <laughs> um, uh, you said something and it made me think about what I forget. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm like someone that's a very disorganized, <laughs> disorganized mind. <laughs> yeah. It's not your fault. Um. Okay, so you, you don't think like we should have like these roles like it really depends on your own relationship like mm-hmm. for me I don't know like she likes being passenger princess mm-hmm. I like being taken care of <laughs> sorry I think this mic is like yeah maybe for the thing yeah uh, I mean they're on yeah they're on but it's no you honestly you guys are more important than my voice so it's okay just being over there Passenger princess? <laughs> yeah, she likes being passenger princess. Uh-huh. I love driving. I uh-huh. want him to sit so that I can like have full control, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> do you yeah, like, yeah. you're yeah. driving yeah, when I you're do that. that. <laughs> I do that, and then when I break, I'm like, oh, don't worry, you know? <laughs> do you like to drive like fast, like, or? Yeah, I'm the reckless driver. He's older than 25, so his <laughs> frontal lobe's developed, you know? He's an adult, but yeah. I definitely like driving. I like cooking, so I'm a cook. Yeah. He can clean. Mm. I don't like doing laundry, so I'm gonna make him do laundry. <laughs> okay. Do you guys like split up those roles? Or, like, hey, I cook, you clean, like, or is it just like you guys just go go with the flow type of thing? Go with the flow, because I know at the end of the day he would do anything for me. Yeah. So. Okay. Um. I mean, is there? Anything else that you want to talk about? Maybe like clothes, fashion, or artsiness? Yeah, yeah. Modeling. Yeah. Let's talk Yay. about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Yeah, like, you guys like clothes? <laughs> <laughs> Should we go shopping to get there? <laughs> I know um, this shirt that she has on right now was handmade by herself. It's, um, yes, but it's just, it's just hot press, hot press. But yeah, um, I actually like, well, I can't anymore because it's like copyrighted, but this cool. is like what originally I wanted to name like my clothing brand in the future. Cry baby. Yeah. That's cool. Very, it's um, so cute. Maybe you could like change the letter. Yeah, I was thinking that yeah. like cry BB or like no A or something. Yeah. But, but I've seen like some posts and like you ha- you created like full pieces. Uh-huh. like. So like I was super into um, upcycling for a little while, like just like thrifting clothes and then like making something that I would actually wear out of Mm -hmm. it. Um, It was super fun. I think I just kind of like, I like lost, I didn't didn't lose interest in it, but like just a little bit of like motivation with like Mm -hmm. being in school, like like having these like different priorities that I feel like I don't have enough time to do other things. Yeah, but that's just something I need to be better at because I definitely have the time. I'm just like so like, mentally tired from like studying or something like that that like I don't want to do it but it's I'm not something that you want to like force right like yeah. it's like more like oh I, I want to make something today yeah and exactly just, mm. and then when I do get those like um like bursts of inspiration like mm. I can't I usually can't get over it until I actually do it the only 
the only problem is is like I haven't been getting that first lately, mm -hmm. you know? Maybe like surrounding yourself with like that people in that space uh -huh. might, you know, inspire you a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. It was fun making those shirts. Yeah. We did it like a couple days ago. Yeah. Oh, together? Uh -huh. Did you, you guys have like magic shirts? You want to see? <laughs> so it's for my birthday. I see. Is it the picture with like the girl standing? Uh huh. Like the did you see all the. Oh, what is that? Birthday bitches, bitches bitch. I like that one. He did that. not like that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said he didn't like that one? That's <laughs> so cute. Crazy. How'd you guys do this? It's just like iron on letters. Oh, you just. Yeah. Okay. But um, do you see the cherries? Cherries? We put cherries at the bottom of their shirts. Oh, like, so it's like it's literally right at the balls. <laughs> Wait, man. It's like bedazzled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bedazzled cute. cherries. <laughs> Okay, um, I think uh, we've been recording for a decent amount of time, so I think it's a good time to end. Mm -hmm. uh, how I normally end my podcast is I just ask my guests just like, you know, give yourself a piece of advice to your younger self. Mm -hmm. And it could be something very specific, like, d don't go down that app. <laughs> or it could be like, you know, just like uh, an, an approach towards life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like y'all kind of gave like a lot of good insight, but it's just something that you really just want to hit home. Mm -hmm. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. It's okay. Mm. That was literally gonna be mine. Like really? I grew up so super anxious. So like, yeah. relax, mm. calm down. Like life is gonna go the way it's supposed to go. Oh, and also, don't start vaping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please don't start vaping. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Have a coffee and <laughs> nicotine in the morning. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on. It was, this was pretty fun. It's definitely less like um, like pressure yeah. in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're just talking. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was very fun for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, but I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Thanks right. for having us. Thanks. Hey. That was super chill. That was super fun. Bad, right? I was honestly so nervous, but like that was. <laughs>